The biggest criticism of the carnivore diet, aside from eating only meat, is that it can be very expensive. And yes, this is true if you're buying rack of lamb, lobster, and prime rib. But what if I told you it didn't have to be expensive? And no, I'm not going to suggest ground beef and canned meats as many people do. After 18 months on the carnivore diet, I finally settled on a super fatty cut of meat that costs under $5 a pound and you can cook it in so many different ways. I'm going to show you the three easiest and fastest ways I like to cook this steak. Check it out. Alright guys, all this can be done indoors and what you need is an oven, an air fryer, or a cast iron pan. The air fryer is a one step process and the fastest while the oven takes longer but is used for thicker pieces of steak. Then there's the boss of all pans, the cast iron skillet. This very inexpensive tool will deliver you the best flavor and texture without the need of culinary skill or expertise. So the cut of meat I want to recommend is the chuck roast due to its abundant fat content. The chuck, similar to the ribeye, gives you a 2 to 1 protein to fat ratio. I emphasize the fat here because on the carnivore diet, you want to prioritize fats as your essential macronutrient. Now, I know you guys at home don't have an electric meat slicer, but no worries, because I'm going to show you a pro tip on how to get a clean cut across the middle of any steak. For the piece of meat I'm cutting right now, we're going to slice it thin, about a half inch thick. And before cutting your meat, put it in the freezer for about 30 minutes. This will make it much easier to slice. See this strip of fat? This will sizzle and melt right into your mouth, providing an immense amount of flavor. To slice the next piece for a thicker, juicier middle, take out your chef knife and make sure it's well sharpened. If you don't have a knife sharpener, you can order online a very inexpensive one, around $10, which is exactly what I use. Now here comes the pro tip. Trace a line with the tip of your knife around the entire steak to keep it as close to the middle as possible. This will guide you as we cut back and forth. Keep your opposite hand spread and pressed firmly against the top of the steak while imagining the knife cutting flat right below your palm. This chuck roast was just about 3 pounds, so one of these will give you a 25 ounce dinner and will keep you feeling full most of the day. Grab your kosher salt and generously salt your steak on both sides as this is ready to head into the toaster oven. If you don't have a toaster oven, don't worry, because you can easily use your regular oven at home. We're going to cook this steak the reverse sear method as this is the mecca for all carnivore cooks out there. First we cook it at a low temperature for about 20 minutes then sear it on very high heat. Baking it at a low heat allows the center of your steak to reach a rare or medium rare temperature without losing any fat. And that's right meat eaters, I emphasize rare here. For those of you new to the carnivore diet, you should be eating all your beef rare around 115 to 120 degrees. This way you can savor all the juices and vitamins without losing it to heat degradation. This steak was cooked at 200 degrees for about 20 minutes. We're aiming for a center temp of about 90 to 100 degrees because the meat itself will raise another 10 degrees or so from searing on the cast iron. For thicker pieces of steak, crank the temp up to 250 degrees and leave it in for at least 25 to 30 minutes. If you don't have a meat thermometer, no worries. Just use the cooking times I've mentioned. So here we are left with this dismal looking piece of pale brown meat. All we have to do now is sear it for an additional 90 seconds and you've transformed ugly into beauty. If you haven't already, make sure your cast iron is preheated. You know it's ready when you can see smoke coming off the surface. Remember, our piece of meat is already cooked on the inside. So we just want to sear it for about 45 seconds on each side to give us that beautiful golden brown crust. If you don't have a cooking press like I do in this video, no worries because it's not absolutely necessary. But if you like to use a similar device, you can go ahead and put something like a heavy pasta pot on your steak. As you can see, some parts of the chuck steak are so soft and tender, they pull right apart. I like to separate my steak at the fat lines and slice it into thin pieces. Now most people would tell you to let the steak rest on the cutting board for a few minutes after it comes off the stove. But I don't do that. And here's why. I'd rather eat my steak while it's fresh off the stove searing hot. And additionally, I'll drink any juices off my plate so nothing goes to waste. And there you have it. That concludes easy steak cooking method number one. Next up, the air fryer. 
First, I want to bring up a point of clarification for those new to the air fryer. This device is nothing like the fryers you cook french fries and chicken fingers in. An air fryer is a glorified toaster oven with a heavy duty fan built to move air around the cooking chambers. The result? Heavier food molecules like fats and oils are dispersed and distributed more evenly around your food. Whatever meat you're cooking, always preheat the ceramic plate in your air fryer if it came with one. I preheat mine for about 3-5 to five minutes. This will help give your steak a slight crisp on both sides. I set this air fryer to its maximum heat setting which is 400 degrees. And that's pretty much all the prep you have to do. You may choose to salt your steak before or after it's cooked. I found there's not much of a difference. A steak this thin will take about 3-4 to four minutes on one side before having to flip over. After about 8 minutes in total, you get this. For our last cooking method, we will start by salting our thin cut steak, then leaving it out on the counter for an hour. During this time, the salt will pull some moisture out of the surfaces, which will give us a better crust. Exterior moisture is your biggest enemy when trying to crisp the outsides of your steak. Go ahead and pat dry both sides with a couple paper towels, and you'll be amazed to find out how much water was pulled during this hour. Now fire up your stove and this time dial it down to a medium high heat. Once it's smoking, lay down your steak and let it cook for about 3-4 to four minutes. Don't be scared to give it a peek if you're worried about burning it. Go ahead and flip it once you've got that beautiful cast iron charred surface. Cook for an additional 2-3 to three minutes and voila! Done! One last piece of advice I want to give you is that you can ask the butcher at your supermarket to cut down a chuck roast into individual steaks. When you get home, wrap them up and lay them out in the freezer. I buy 10 pounds of steak at the beginning of the week and each night before bed I move one into the refrigerator to defrost for the next day. This has pretty much been my routine for almost two years now and I have to say, the carnivore diet has helped me tremendously. If you have any questions, drop a comment below and I'll be sure to get back to you. If you guys want to see more carnivore recipes, please like and subscribe. And as always, eat, meat, repeat. See you later everybody.